everybody, welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, this beautiful Wheel Horse 416 garden tractor. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Beautiful isn't the first word that comes to mind. Well, actually, underneath all of the, uh, the dust and the copious amounts of bird crap, I think we have a pretty nice tractor here. It's, it's not real banged up. The paint even looks pretty good from what I can see of it. It's just extremely, extremely filthy. Um, a lot of times people ask me, Matt, why don't you clean some of these projects before you start wrenching on them? Most of the time I don't mind. Whatever dirt is there is probably not even gonna come off with a pressure wash job anyhow. But uh, this time might be a different case. This thing is pretty gross. And uh, I think before I touch this thing, we're gonna go ahead and fire up the pressure washer, clean it all off, and uh, make it a little more healthy to work on. So anyways, what is the story with this unit, Matt? Well, a nice fellow that I know called me up and said he was gonna junk this thing unless I wanted it, so I told him to bring it on out, and he did. He was nice enough to drop it off for us and said it's been probably seven or eight years at least since it last ran. He said it did run when parked, you know, but so many things often come that way. So, like I said, it's a 416-8 model. The, I'm not sure what the 4 stands for, but the 16 stands for 16 horsepower. 8 stands for the 8-speed transmission we have behind that engine. I am not a, a big wheel horse guy. I've uh, kind of fell into several of them now. Uh, they are great tractors, but I am still through and through a Cub Cadet diehard. But I would... I would probably put Wheel Horse up there as second to Cub Cadets. These are also very, very good tractors. Years ago, I did a video on a Toro Wheel Horse that looks very similar to this tractor, but is actually a smaller lawn tractor. The main difference between a garden tractor and a uh, lawn tractor is mainly what it's designed to do. This thing is designed to run all sorts of different attachments, whereas a lawn tractor primarily designed to cut grass. Uh, these are much beefier, heavier built units than said lawn tractors. But anyways, years ago I did a video on the Toro Wheel Horse lawn tractor and it was actually the first thing that I can remember ever driving. I kind of grew up on that thing and uh, kind of sentimental to me and that's where the wheel horses kind of also fall into that. Uh, even these bigger ones, they all kind of have that same look about them from the 80s and 90s and I've just kind of always been partial to them. Anyways, enough blabbering. We're going to see if we can't get this thing cleaned up, fired up, and back to mowing some grass in today's video. My dad's pretty rough on mowers. He's been tearing up my zero turn at the house for a few years now. So maybe this might be just the ticket to slow him down a touch and keep him from taking it into the creek. It's got some nice ag tires on the back here. These things are pretty darn pricey. I don't know if you ever went and priced to set out. And these ones look like they're pretty much brand new, so that's nice. Uh, front tires look fine, nothing special. This one's got air, I think this one does not. Yeah. Anyways, let's fire up the pressure washer and get this thing a bath. Well, how about that? 
This thing cleaned up great. It could still use some hardcore scrubbing and buffing, but uh, we're not going to sink that kind of time into it until we know that we have us a good unit here. But yeah, it's actually still got some shine to it. Not bad for free. Let's get this thing into the shop and crack her open. Did we need another tractor, buddy? Did we need another tractor? <gasps> no, we didn't. No, but we're happy we got one. <laughs> All right. So for those diehard wheel horse fanatics out there, you can freeze frame the video. There's the serial number, if that tickles your fancy. Uh, where else should we start on this thing? Let's start uh, under her hood here. Battery connections, well the battery's disconnected. Um, slightly corroded connections, not terrible. I mean, I'm sure this battery's junk. Um, what I'm doing right now is looking for a year date on it, try to figure out how old the battery is because that's a good indication of how long something could have been sitting. Uh, air cleaner cover is off of it, but the guy did give it to me, so that's good. Pull the dipstick, have a little gander at that. It's got oil. Doesn't look too dark. It's in the full range. Doesn't smell like gasoline, so that's good. Good enough to start it and run it at least. Ah, uh, here's a good, here's a good sign. All this dry grass, dirt, whatever mixture, pushing out the side of the engine housing, or the flywheel housing rather. Um, so. With this particular engine, you can see behind the flywheel screen. So this sucks in air here, and then the fl spinning flywheel kind of acts like a turbo in a way and pushes the air all around the engine. That's what these engine tins are actually, you know, they're not just to make the engine look pretty, they're functional. They direct air around all the cooling fins and keep the engine cool. So you gotta watch. Mice can get in here and build big nests up on top of here and that'll plug up all your cooling fins and then you start the tractor up unbeknownst to you there's a mouse house in there blocking all the cooling fins and you can smoke your engine so seeing all this gunk in here tells me we should have a gander behind that cover before we get too frisky with this thing what else this is a refreshingly simple uh, unit to work on compared to what a lot of the things we work on let's uh, let's check this gas tank the gas shock there is supposed to hold the seat up but never does so they're always blown out. I'll get a pair of vice grips, hold that up. So according to the gauge on top of the cap here, it's empty. Ah, well that float. A lot of times these things are all deteriorated. This one actually looks really good. So basically that float just indicates the level. Looks clean in there. doesn't really even smell like gas. Ugh. Transmission oil. Looks clean. Doesn't smell burnt. All right. Good sign. We got some snowplow mount brackets on this unit. I think I have a snowplow for one of these things too. All right, everything is looking great so far. Let's do a little uh, looking at our control station here. Hour meter shows we've got 923 hours, I think that says on it. So under a thousand hours, that is not bad for a tractor of this age. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know the wheel horses super well, but I believe that this model is like an early 90s, I'm pretty sure. Uh, somebody drop a comment and let me know for sure. So what we got here is a high low range, 
Uh, we're in low range. Just need to rock it a bit, maybe. Anyway, this is your one through three. You got first, reverse, second, third. Okay, so it shifts into all those gears. There we go. And yep, we can get it into both high and low. These these rear ends are pretty stout. Not quite as good as the Cub Cadet rear ends, but pretty good. Uh, headlight switch, choke later, throttle, and then got all these nice warning lights down here and we got this little test switch and I wonder if the test switch just is a test to make sure all these lights are functioning so that you know uh, you're not missing something it's pretty pretty advanced for something like this really this is your PTO engagement lever over here so you push this forward that engages your PTO up there that's driving the mower deck this thing here raises and lowers your mower deck. A lot of these had hydraulic lift on them. This one does not. Uh, but really your cut height is adjusted right here, like so. Yeah, like I said, everything's looking good. Let's uh, get a battery hooked up to this thing and see what it does. So I still can't find a uh, date code on the battery at all, but it is not completely dead, but it is super weak. I mean, we're looking at like 2.7 volts there. All right, looks like we got some good connections. Put the jump pack on it. All right, nothing's on fire, so that's a good sign. I'm gonna hit the key and see what happens here. All right, well, right clicked into the on position, the voltmeter jumps up and shows us how much voltage we got. We're sitting right around 12, 12 and a half volts. So I was right about this fancy little test switch gizmo down here. So we flip the switch, bam, it just makes, the, makes sure that all of our warning lights are functional. So that's pretty nice. Like I said, that's kind of like something you'd expect to see on some really high-end expensive device, you know. Uh, typically, I wouldn't think that a garden tractor merits such things, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have, that's for sure. So, let's get this thing into neutral here. Alright, um, I guess we're probably going to have a clutch switch, for safety sakes. Hit the key. You guys hear the solenoid clicking? Hmm. So here's a giveaway that our solenoid's bad. Can you guys look at those studs, the way the, the stud is on the right hand side there? See how that plastic's all melted? This stud is off on some goofy angle. Apparently that solenoid got plenty hot at one point in time. And uh, yeah, that's not going to be any good. We're going to have to replace that. Let's try to bypass it for now and just jump the solenoid and see what happens. Let's give her a go here. Contact! Sounds pretty darn good. You guys ready? Contact. Contact. Oops. Nice. Engine sounds pretty good. All right, let's give it a shot. Key is in the on position. Contact. Hmm. Not seeing any spark out of that thing. Normally, with all the stuff that we work on that's gasoline powered, normally we would be looking at the, uh, the points in the condenser right now. This unit does not have that. We could have issue with a safety sensor still. I'm going to go ahead and try to lock everything out and see if we have some sort of safety override maybe that's uh, negating our spark right now. So I'm going to try to lock the brake on. The 
We've got the clutch locked on. Kiontek. We got spark now. That leaves what? That leaves fuel, and we should pull off at least this top engine tin and have a gander underneath there and see what it looks like. Well, the air filter isn't the worst I've seen, but probably should be replaced. Bit of gunk built up behind there. I had to take that cover off the carburetor, probably twofold. First and foremost was so we could get this bolt out and get this top cover off, but probably need to have access to this carburetor. More than likely, we're gonna have to pull that bowl off and clean it out. So these Kohler K-series have a cast aluminum head and the bolt that we're trying to take out right now is a steel bolt obviously threaded into that aluminum head and what happens is you have iron and aluminum oxidation. Basically two different types of metals don't play well together. That bolt is going to get oxidized into the head and this bolt, this particular bolt hole on the head is so very often snapped off in these Kohler K-series. These are great engines, they're very, very rugged, very bulletproof, but this particular little quarter-inch bolt here is very common to see snapped off. So if I can manage to get it out here, I do have it moving. Uh, I should go ahead and spray it with some oil while we have it out a little bit, try to work that into the threads there. Um, if I can manage to get that out, we're going to have to tap that before we put another bolt back in it. to get it out. Well, good news though. I can see down in on top of the flywheel. There doesn't appear to be any other nests or material down in there. All right, engines back together. Let's get some gasoline thrown at this thing and see if we're going to have any luck firing this thing up. Alright, I'm not going to go crazy because the way these fuel tanks are on these wheel horses, there's like a rubber grommet that holds the fuel valve into the bottom of the tank. And if that rubber is deteriorated from sitting, it can leak. This one seems pretty tight. Seems all right. We'll put some more in it.
thing is idling fantastic. No clean the carburetor, no nothing. No smoke to speak of. Doesn't even smell like it's running real rich or anything. Unbelievable. I really thought for sure I'd have to pull that carburetor off there and clean it. Look at that. It runs so smooth. said I was gonna. I ended up making a parts run. I picked us up a new battery. I got us a new solenoid and a new air cleaner and what else? Ah, bottle of slime for the tire here. This one front tire keeps losing air pretty quick. I think I misspoke earlier though. I was talking about this engine being a K-series. It's not a K-series Kohler. It's like the series after the K-series. All right, so I'm looking in here to change our little melted solenoid here, and I found this other ring terminal just floating in here, not connected to anything. And this is a ground, it's grounded. Um, it's going to the same ground as the battery ground. And I believe that is supposed to be underneath one of these bolts on the solenoid ears here that ground out that solenoid. So that's not grounded, I don't, I don't know if that could have caused the melting, I highly doubt it. But uh, sometimes if you don't have proper ground, it'll find ground elsewhere and that can cause heat. Stinking thing has nuts on the back side. You gotta hold the nuts. Unbelievable. Why would that be like that? Well, now I'm irritated. Have to take the battery right back out because I'm paying my stupid tax. Turns out the solenoid cannot be easily changed without removing the battery tray. Or at least I presume the battery tray comes out to reveal the solenoid or actually I just don't understand why that it doesn't help you at all no how the heck are you supposed to get to these bolts you can't get a wrench in there you can't get anything in there these should definitely be spot welded in here let's try this again it is my hope that if I take this panel off I'll be able to get to the back side of that solenoid. It does appear to give me access. Thank goodness. Very dumb. What an absolute pain in the butt. Now you can see how melted and broken this one is. No good. So 
and here's our new solenoid and we don't need all four poles but it won't hurt to have them either bolt that guy right there back in business and of course this guy goes from the solenoid up to the battery all right well everything is back together got the battery all hooked up solenoids all hooked up all the wires are connected should be able to just tickle the key now and crank her over contact uh what the heck interesting what did we do wrong here all right so i basically just had a blonde moment there i'm not thinking we came from a three pole solenoid to a four pole so the three pole grounds up through the body and that's why we have that this wire here that we had to connect to our uh, mounting bolt that grounds out the body of the solenoid but actually on this particular solenoid since it's not the correct one for the tractor we're using a four pole it's fine it fits the bill it'll does the same thing but we have to ground out the other side of the coil essentially there's an electromagnetic coil which engages in there when you hit the key and lets power from this wire go to that wire thus starting the engine so I got a jumper wire on the other side of the solenoid there we're gonna connect this guy to ground and I'll bet you it works. Let's see, cross your fingers, is it gonna work? Contact. Hey! Yeah, buddy. So we'll just make up a permanent ground wire and uh, we should be good to go. Well, the old wheel horse is just itching to get out and uh, stretch her legs and cut some grass, I can tell. But uh, before we can do that, we should do some preventative maintenance here. We have no idea what the condition of that oil really is so I'm gonna fire this thing up let it run for a while uh, get the oil good and hot and we'll drain it out and put some fresh stuff in there we got to grease up the deck and last but not least I'm gonna throw some slime in this tire because it loses air really fast so we'll slime that tire and maybe the rest of them because they're they all kind of lose air I think Somebody made sure the drain plug was not going to come out. Oh man, that plug is in there. Might have just rounded it off. I got these rocket sockets a while back. I showed them off in a video. I'm not sponsored or affiliated in any way, but man, these things work good. Give this a little tappy tap. Hopefully, this will do it. Oh my goodness, this thing's in here. There we go, holy crap. I can't believe the amount of force I just had to put on that thing to get it off. I'm fairly convinced that we're going to get oil absolutely everywhere. There's no way to get the pan really situated under here properly. Uh, no, not too bad. It all worked out. I was wrong. All right, got us a new oil plug here. I put some Teflon tape that is petroleum rated on there so that we don't get a stuck plug again hopefully. Bing bang boom she's in. Let's get some Rotella in this thing. I'm sure this won't surprise any of my loyal followers here. We're gonna put some Rotella T5 semi-synthetic in this thing. Uh, because that's what I run in just about everything anymore. 
because it's some darn good oil. I feel like you really get the best of all worlds here with the semi-synthetic blend. Lots of uh, additives in this oil that these old engines like that they just don't put in most oils today. If this stuff's good enough for your Peterbilt going down the highway, it's definitely good enough for your little single cylinder Kohler here. For the life of me, I can't understand why anybody wants to cheap out on oil. It's like the simplest and easiest thing to ensure you get maximum life out of your engine. Why you'd want to go the cheap route is beyond me. Run good oil and know that you don't have that as an issue. Looks like we're right on the money. Well, we're about this close to seeing if this thing's gonna fire up and go mow for us. We need to take care of these tires first. Well, look, it's only flat on the bottom. Just squeeze her on in. A little tire like this probably doesn't really take that much. <laughs> you guys see that? I just went to pull the valve stem, or I went to pull the, the bottle, the slime back off the valve stem and the whole thing, the rubber and all, just gave out and came with the bottle. Oh boy. I think I have some valve stems. I'm gonna have to try to install one of them. At the very least, we're gonna have to pull the wheel off the machine. Very simple design to get these off of a wheel horse. You pull the dust cover off first. There's just a cotter pin and a washer in here. We'll pull that off and the whole tire should slide off. Ta-da! See the valve stem just broke right off of there. I've never, never had that happen. Completely dry rotted. That's probably why it was leaking. There we go, the bead is broken. I can get to the back side of the valve stem now. And it looks like they already had tire slime in there from years ago. And like I said, the valve stem was probably the problem the whole time. Old valve stem's out. Here's the new one. I'm going to lubricate it up a little bit with actually some of the slime because that stuff's pretty slippery and we know it's going to seal this up. Somebody will probably tell me this isn't a good idea. I've never done it before like this, but figured it was worth a shot. All right, so from the back side, we just poke it up through. Sometimes you can just push them, but I do have this handy dandy puller tool. It's supposed to help you pull these in. You just thread it onto there and give her a yank, and it should seat it. There we go. All right, well that was nothing, you know, simple little two second job. All right, should be ready to go. Tires are all fixed. I put slime in three out of four. This one over here doesn't look like it's lost any air to speak of over the last couple days. This thing's been sitting in the shop. But last thing we need to do, grease this thing. That's one thing great about these old tractors is that there are grease fittings on everything. A modern tractor, you go buy something like this thing from Lowe's or Home Depot. 
They're complete garbage, and there's not a grease fitting to speak of anywhere. All right, I just got some insight here from my buddy Josh that's a, a pretty big wheel horse guy, like I'm a cub guy, and he says that this center grease fitting here on the deck gets broken off all the time. So this one was missing, and I thought that was strange. So I asked him, I said, do these not have a, a grease fitting in the center? He said they get broken off all the time, so it's best to just grease it and then take it back out. So that's what we're doing. Just listen to this baby purr out here. So quiet, so happy. Final test here, is the mower deck gonna spin up? to ask for anything better than that for free. Runs, rides, mows perfectly. Let's go find a little more grass for this thing to eat.
Shoo, buddy. How you like that? You know, a wheel horse is an animal. This piece of land over here has never, ever seen a finish mower. It's always just been kind of brush hogged. So, things might not look the best to you guys, but honestly, for what we're working with here, it cut it up pretty nice. That unit is definitely no, uh, no Ventrac. It's not made for this kind of abusive terrain, but it's what we got out here at the farm. I don't have any kind of finished lawn out here yet, but that'll be coming someday. But it, it cleaned up this area real nice and didn't take too long to do it. This little tractor. I want to give a special thanks to the fellow that gave it to me. If you're watching this, you know who you are, so thank you. I think I'm done loving on this old girl for now. I don't think it needs anything. It's pretty much 100% ready to go. It doesn't do me much good out here at the farm, so I think I'm going to take it back to uh, my dad's house and give it to him and let him uh, see if he can't keep this one out of the creek. So anyways guys, if you like this video, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button down below the video. It doesn't cost you guys a dime and it really helps out the channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future updates on all the projects that we've got going and the ones that are coming in the future. And last but certainly not least, if you would like to help support the channel in a little more direct fashion and look good doing it, head on over to dieselcreek.com, pick yourself up some sweet swag over there. We've got hats, t-shirts beer koozies, sticker packs, the whole nine yards over at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But that's all I've got for today. So until the next time, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Later.